Here's a technique I've been playing with recently. I think it has some interesting solution to one of the problems we encounter when we sharpen things. So I'm going to zoom in pretty close here so we can see some detail. Let's keep zooming in. There we go. It's one of the problems we encounter when we sharpen is sometimes, especially on people's faces, it sharpens their skin detail a little too much, but also the whole point of having halos and so on. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to duplicate the background layer twice. So I'm pressing Command and Control J, of course. And on this top layer, I'm going to apply some sharpening. And we'll just use Unsharp Mask for the sake of argument. And I'm also going to use numbers that are a little higher than I normally would, because I really want you to see the effects of this, but I wouldn't necessarily use these numbers. But I'm deliberately trying to have it happen so we start to see some of the for example, the detail on her skin coming out a little bit too much, a few little halos here and there. So let's make this pretty obvious. Now, again, you wouldn't normally go this high, but I think you'll find it'll, it'll be easier to see the results. Whoops, that was a wrong tool there. See how in her hair we're definitely seeing some little highlights. Let me actually turn this off. So here's the original, and here's now. While it's sharp and it's bringing out some details that we just don't want. So now we'll go back to the second copy we made, which is at this point, of course, just a copy of the original. But to this one, I'm going to add a very slight Gaussian blur, just maybe two or three pixels, just to kind of smooth things out. But of course, we lose lots of detail that way. So that's not the solution. But here's what I think is an interesting possibility. Go back to the top layer now. So I have a sharpen layer sitting on top of the blurry layer. I'm going to double click on that layer to open up the layer style dialog box, but more importantly, these blend if sliders. And if you haven't played with this before, the, the basics of this is on this layer, if I want anything that's lightly colored to be see-through to let the underlying layer show, I would move this slider here. So if you think about this, the problem I'm face is there are areas where there's too many light colors, like the halos are generally light and some of the detail in her skin is too light. So I'm going to pull this over and I'm going to move it out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. But see what's happening right now. It looks, of course, completely artificial. Something like that. It's definitely way too much. But one of the ways we can really play with these blend if sliders, if I hold down the Option or Alt key, then I can split these in two. And now pull this back to make it a little less obvious. So here's before where we were seeing, look around her eyes and her forehead. You're def definitely seeing some brightly, lightly colored halos, now not so much. Now that's still probably a little bit much, but we can we can play with these sliders. And then the other thing is, remember I have that layer underneath, and I want the lightly colored areas of that underneath layer to start to show through, so I can do the same thing here. Bring this in a little bit, and then maybe split it again to give myself a bit of a range of tones. And again, I'm going to move this right off screen, but hit the preview. So this is before. Look at the nasty little hot spots and halos that are happening and after. Before, after. Let me move down a bit so we see her hair. This is what the sharpening looked like. Notice some of the noticeable halo type areas and then after. Look at that. The halo just goes away completely. Now the other thing that you can also try and depends on the image itself. In this case, I'm going to try changing the knockout to deep, which means it will not only look at the layer immediately below, it'll look at all the layers below. So it'll start to look down the original photograph as well. So let's see what we've got here. Just try and pick a find of a representative area. Here's the original, looking not as sharp as it could be. Here's what it looked like. Well, I can't really show you because the sharpening also already has taken effect. Um, and then here's with our little glowing layer underneath. So if you're sharpening something and you're not getting the results you want, check this out. I think it has some really interesting possibilities. So you may be wondering how an idea like this comes up. Well, honestly, it's just taking some experimentation, playing around with, I was playing around with the blend if sliders and thinking, what else could I do with this? And then realize the way that it worked. And all of a sudden, you know, that inspiration hits and you're like, ah, and you hear like the choir, ah, you know, and it's just, you know, it's a good idea that has some great potential. So I hope you will enjoy it. I'm Dave Cross. Ah. I'll see you next time.